Hola. Welcome to this week's lesson. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with you and to really provide you with today's content. And um, it's just so, so cool, like to be able to do that. So today we're doing lesson number 16, getting to know the voice of spirit. And I am really, really happy to share this with you because we have been doing for eight weeks, okay, you know, how to connect to our third eye, developing that in our intuition. And now that we've done that, I want us to go into the next step. And that is us moving into hearing and connecting and knowing the difference between the voice of spirit and the voice in our head. And I know that that was one of the things in the beginning where I was like, am I just making this up? <laughs> So I'm so happy to be here. I am pulling it up on my phone so that I can see it, so I can see your comments, I mean. So we are doing lesson number 16, getting to know the voice of spirit and really being able to see the difference between the voice of spirit and your own inner talk, right? That voice in our head that's constantly going on and on and on. Okay, so I am really excited to be here with you. I have my notes, okay? And before we get into anything, we are going to recite the pledge. So I have the pledge here. If you do not have the pledge and you would like to receive it, you can go to my website at Miracles Within Us dot net backslash pledge and you'll be able to get the pledge statement and you'll be able to get the past recordings of all the lessons previous so we are up to lesson number 16 so if there's so many other lessons that are amazing like one of the ones that like people really enjoyed was how to remove negativity from their energy from their aura and that was a lot of fun, so you can catch that there. So let's recite our pledge. I pledge that from this moment on, I will do whatever it takes to be the best version of myself. I will be kind to myself. I will love myself in every state that I am in. I will invest in my personal growth and I say yes to myself and I completely embody the belief that I am more than good enough to attract all good into my life. So, woohoo! yay, so excited. I love saying the pledge. And you know, I suggest that you actually do it every day. And yeah, there's times that, hey, maybe I forget, but when I do remember, Right. I recite it and I recite it more than once, you know, because it reminds me of the possibilities of what I could create in my life. And it really puts me straight. Right. And the angels use words in here to help trigger responses within you. So awesome. I'm going to put that to the side and let's get to, you know, connecting as far as, you know, how to tell the difference between the voice of spirit and your own voice. And so first of all, you know, a lot of the times um, what I've seen is that people see that spirit or the angels, and I'm just going to use the word spirit for right now, but I'm including angels. Okay. And I'm including deceased loved ones. I'm including all of it. Hey, Melissa, I pledge. <laughs> Thank you for pledging. I'm going to share the comment. Thank you for sharing. So cool. So cool. So, so cool. I love this app because it's like you could put the comments up. It's so, so cool. Awesome. So, um, so the, so one thing that I want to share is that when, you know, there's this, I'm, I'm going to cover like all the mediumship of it, right? Just to, in a general space. But how do you hear the voice of spirit and how do you determine 
what that is, right? What that looks like. Um, and is it your own mind or is it spirit actually talking to you? So, you know, like in movies, they'll have like spirit come out and like it's this big illuminating kind of thing. And and I'm going to share with you, it's not always like that. It It's almost never like that. Okay, there's rare occasions <laughs> that it's like this big like thing like that because that would be really scary. Um, and, you know, the point of the angels and spirit is not to scare us. It's to give us support and give us guidance and to show their unconditional love with us. Okay. And they support us through that. Okay. So, you know, it's not also, so how do I share this? So depending on your energy, your way of learning. So depending if you are a kinesthetic learner or you are a um, what's the other visual learner or an auditory learner, right? And depending on how you learn also triggers how the angels will speak to you. Okay. And it's always within you. So something that's really, really um, important is to really comprehend that it's not outside of you. Spirit isn't outside of you really. And the way that you receive messages is that it connects to your heart. Okay, and then from your heart, the message travels up into your mind and it could show you pictures. Um, for some of us, it's just a knowing or we hear a few words or we see some symbols or, or, or things along those lines. Okay, so you have to start being more aware of how you learn and also how you are actually getting messages. Right. So. For myself, I am a kinesthetic learner, okay? So as a kinesthetic learner, I learn with using my senses, especially sense of touch. So angels use touch as a way to show me that they're there, they show me symbols in the touch, and, and also when, they, when I hear them, it is through the sense of touch, okay? And it is also through the sense of my knowingness. So they come in there and they speak and it's almost like a different it's my it's not a different voice okay it's not like i have a female voice you hear my voice my voice sounds like that there and the angels sound like that right they sound the same it's not really changed what changes or like what's different about it, it's not really changed what's different about it is the language in which they share the message right so i speak a certain way you speak a certain way right? And spirit has its own language as well. So you will be able to determine the difference by the way in which they use language, the way in which they use their words, okay? So, you know, I don't use dear ones, I am, right? The angels are like really key on that. So dear ones, dear loved ones, dear beloved, dark spirit, right? This is divine ascended master Jesus, right? This is how a lot of the times they speak, okay? And as you start getting calm, okay? Because once you start getting like you feel something and then you get all excited and you're, you disconnect a little bit when you get into, oh my God, I'm feeling this and this and that, you lose a little bit of what they're sharing with you. So something that is important is for you to try your hardest <laughs> to remain as calm as possible. So I remember when I was practicing to see auras, right? And I'm still practicing to see auras because my learning style is kinesthetic. Visual is not my strong suit. Okay, visual visual messages are in my song shoot, but I wanted to focus, like I wanted to learn how to see auras. So when I first practiced to you to see auras, which I'll share with you a simple exercise for those of you who want to learn that really quickly. Um, so I I uh, I was doing that, and as soon as I started to see my aura a little bit, it's like, oh my god, I'm so excited, and then I completely lost it, right? Because I was like, oh my god, I did it, right? So when you are practicing something, you want to try to stay as 
centered as possible during that interaction, during that learning. Okay. And I know it gets exciting because you're like, oh my God, I didn't know I could do that. This is amazing. And we get all of that. And that's great. Okay. It's important also to celebrate our wins. So after you have that great poof, right, you can then share and like get really excited about what you actually were able to see. So the voice of spirit is is a different is almost like a different language and what you end up doing is learning how to translate so if you're a visual learner right if your primary learning style is visual okay one of the things that spirit the way in which spirit is going to share itself with you in and giving you messages to even to channel messages for others as well is going to be through um, pictures, through symbols in your mind's eye and also around you. Like you will just see things starting to illuminate. So this happens with me when I'm like, which card and which card deck am I going to use for this week's, you know, angelic tarot reading? So for those of you who know, I do weekly tarot readings, right? Um, angel tarot readings. So I have a healing message. So I always ask, which deck do you want? And it's almost like the deck illuminates in my eye and they like, it looks shiny or whatever. There's something that draws me. And I know that that they're using my visual stimuli to answer my question. Okay. So sometimes it's not always like a voice that you hear or like a picture in your mind. It actually comes from outside of you as well. Like you see it right? In, in a form, like there's symbols. Um, in the beginning, when I was start, first channeling angels, right? Like in actually getting a little bit, I would see numbers because I love numbers. I've always loved numbers. Like when I was in school, that was my favorite subject. To the point that when I was in college, I had taken extra classes <laughs> in math and in calculus and all of that because I just wanted math in my life. And I also became a math tutor in my my college so that I could be in the circle of math and numbers. And that is how much I loved it, right? And people are like, you're crazy. People, you know, duh. And I'm like, no, I love it. So angels know that right? Our spirit knows what we love. So they will show us symbols through the things in which we love. So what are some things that you love, right? If you love music, then the angels will speak to you through the music. They will have a song. They'll have a phrase that you hear it and you're like, oh my God, that is the answer to my question. Okay, so that is how you start connecting more with the angels. They use everything possible. Okay, there's no limit to what they will they will show you until you get it right. Until you get the message, they don't. Give As humans sometimes give up on things that we want. Angels don't understand what giving up looks like. It's not a part of their, they're just, this is it. And you're going to, I'm going to stay here until you get it. And they're very, very patient. Okay. So that is like amazing because no matter what's going on and you miss the first symbol, you miss the second one, you will find the third one. Okay. It will always come. So hearing the voice of spirit. Getting to know the voice of spirit is all also about you being playful and being in your joy. If you are going into, I want to hear spirit, I want to hear spirit, I want to hear spirit, you're going to have a really hard time because your only focus is on, on I want to instead of I am here waiting for the voice of spirit. Okay, so I hope you got that. So I just want to put this up there real quick. Getting to know the voice of spirit. I love this little app thing because like you could put, you could write a little something and then like it shows up on the screen. Ah! I like it. I like it. And this software, for those of you who are like, 
okay, I want to learn how to do Facebook Live on my computer. There is this software called BeLive.tv. And you'll see it here. Oh, oh. <laughs> you'll see it here um, up on the corner. And it's BeLive.tv.com. And you can sign up there to do live stream videos on Facebook Live. And there's other softwares. And this is the one in which I'm using right now. So for those of you who want to know, and um, great. So the difference between the voice of spirit and the voice of in the voice in our head is that the voice in our head also does a lot of shoulds. You have to. You have to do this. You should do this. Voice, um, spirit's voice is not like that. Spirit's voice is very calm, very loving, and very open. Okay. So, um Spirit will say something like this, right? And I'm just paraphrasing because I'm not actually channeling right now. Uh, it's It will sound like this. Dear loved one, I, whomever the angel is, I am with you at this moment in time. And then they always bring in their army. We angels, we spirit are here to guide you on your path towards blah, 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 or something along those lines. Our mind will tell us, Something like, it is time for you to go now and do something. Go do this now. Um, that is our mind. Spirit does not demand anything of us. Or should I say, angels demand nothing. Um, beings of 100% pure white light and the angels, which are a part of the 100% pure white light category, they demand nothing. OK, now there are other spirits in this world, right, that they may demand. So this is something that you have to be aware of. OK, and I'm not saying this to scare anyone. I'm saying this to be real with you. Right. And so that's how you can tell the difference. Like, is this spirit from 100 percent pure white light or is this like a being that wants me to do something for them? OK, and um, you can tell by the tone, by the way, or is it my mind talking to me? Right. Um, yes, pure beings of 100 percent pure white light. And I love to use that beings of 100 percent pure white light. Write this down. Right. Write this down right now. Beings of 100% pure white light. This is a, this is what you want to connect with, right? Angels of 100% pure white light, spirit, deceased one, 100% pure white light. Um, you, you can only, okay, attract and bring into your energy things that are like you, okay? We are beings of 100% pure white light. Yeah, you are. You are a being of 100% pure white light. I am a being of 100% pure white light. That is our true source of where we come from. Okay? That is why we can connect to spirit. That is why we have that connection. And it will never break unless we don't want it anymore. Right? By choice. Okay? So I'm not going to get into that. But what I want to share that is really, really important is that the voice of spirit and the voice in our head is very, very different if you listen to the language in which you are receiving the message. Okay? You, you want to listen to the language as what is being said. Because your mind will tell you, I have to do this, or I need to do that, I should be doing this, or I shouldn't be doing that. Spirit wouldn't tell you shoulds, have tos, shouldn't, um, go now, do this now, I demand this now. True spirit of 100% pure white light won't do that. Our ego will do that. Because our ego loves making us wrong <laughs> and loves keeping us in a, in, a, in a bubble because it's what it knows, right? That's what the ego does is it keeps us in the space of what it knows because anything outside of it's not knowing is a threat. 
So that's why ego sometimes trips up. It was because when things aren't um, in the knowing of the ego. So if the ego knows all of this and you want to come outside of this, what ends up happening is the ego tries to convince you that this is the only way, that this is the only thing that exists. And as soon as you try to get out of that this here, um, ego has a hard time because it doesn't know that area. Okay. And because it doesn't know that area, it feels threatened. And when something feels threatened, what happens? You defend, you put up guard, you fight. Um, so that is why ego does that. So you, us, right? Us as humans have ego because we need it. We, it's a part of our human experience. It's what's kept us safe. But not everything that's outside of the knowing isn't safe. Okay, not everything outside of the knowing isn't safe. Okay, most of the time it is. It just doesn't know that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So, voice of spirit, voice of your mind. The difference is the language and how they make you want to do things. So, or or not make you want to do things. I used this, the wrong 